Hello. Under Edward VI, and for most of the reign of Mary I, the royal fleet was once again neglected. Not long before she died, Mary appointed the wealthy Plymouth merchant Sir John Hawkins to the position of Treasurer of the Navy Board. With the accession of Elizabeth I, and facing the threat of a Spanish invasion, the Navy became a priority, and under the guidance of Hawkins, an experienced seaman who had grown rich preying on Spanish merchantmen and disrupting Spain's trade with their New World colonies, led the way in technical innovation. Hawkins reformed naval administration. The idea of ordinary was established, maintaining a reserve fleet of ships able to be brought into commission at short notice. Master shipwright Matthew Baker, the first English shipwright known to have worked from paper plans, was commissioned and new designs were introduced. Race-built galleons with a dedicated gun deck, equipped with heavier cannon. Smaller than the earlier carracks, typically three-masted with sleeker hulls, built for speed and greater manoeuvrability. One of the first of these new style vessels was Francis Drake Revenge, built by Matthew Baker in the Royal Dockyard at Deptford and launched in 1577. Drake was a distant cousin of John Hawkins. Support for the rebellion in the Netherlands against Spanish rule, formalised by the Treaty of Nonsuch in 1585, provoked Philip of Spain to declare war on England. An invasion was planned, backed by Pope Sixtus, with the aim of conquering England and restoring Catholicism. Delayed by coastal raids and a surprise attack on Cadiz by Drake in 1587, singeing the King of Spain's beard as it came to be known, this is Drake's map of his attack drawn by William Burra, one of his officers. The Spanish Armada, dubbed the Invincible Armada and the Great Enterprise, 151 ships, 8,000 sailors and 18,000 soldiers finally set sail on the 28th of May 1588. Alexander Farnese, Duke of Parma, Governor of the Spanish Netherlands, had a further 30,000 troops in readiness waiting across the Channel. The Armada was sighted off the Lizard on the 19th of July. News quickly reached London and elsewhere via a series of beacons and signal stations. Legend, of course, has it that Francis Drake was playing a game of bowls on Plymouth Hoe when he heard the Spanish fleet had been sighted off the coast of Cornwall and calmly finished the game. There was no immediate rush. The English fleet, 34 ships of the Navy Royal and a further 163 commissioned or commandeered were trapped by the tide until the following morning when they set sail in pursuit. Nominally in charge was Charles Howard, Lord Howard of Effingham aboard Ark Royal, but effectively command was ceded to the far more experienced Francis Drake on revenge. The Armada fleet was drawn up in a defensive crescent-shaped formation with warships at the centre and on each flank, guarding transport and supply ships in between. A series of running battles took place with the superior tactics and manoeuvrability of the English fleet taking a toll. Under constant harrying, the Spanish continued east along the channel to anchor off Calais. After nightfall, fire ships were sent in, scattering the Spanish fleet. Out of formation, and with the wind in the wrong direction to allow the Spanish to regroup and return to Calais, a decisive engagement took place on the morning of the next day, the 28th of July, near the small port of Gravelines, around 15 miles south of Dunkirk. Having failed to rendezvous with the Duke of Parma, the Spanish had no option but to sail with the prevailing wind north along the east coast of England, chased by the English fleet, circling the British Isles in order to reach the Atlantic and return to Spain. Many ships were lost, 67 of the 151 strong fleet that set sail from Spain and around 10,000 men of 26,000 men 
survive the voyage. No English ships were lost. Casualties numbered 400 wounded and 50 to 100 killed. The Spanish sailors were experienced and competent seamen. Given the difficulties faced, there must have been countless cases of heroism. This was recognised by their government, who were generous to those who returned. By contrast, the English crews, who had been on active service for nine months, were discharged without pay. A number of naval charities were set up to provide aid to those in need, including the Chatham Chest, founded by John Hawkins and Francis Drake in 1590. Bad weather and a strategy that was overcomplicated contributed to the defeat of the Armada, but superior ships and proficient seamanship on the English side played a vital part. The tactics adopted against the Armada reflected the change in the way naval warfare was conducted, away from ramming and boarding to using heavy guns at long range. Gunners now played the critical role. Queen Elizabeth gave her famous speech at Tilbury on the 9th of August, which included the stirring lines, I know I have the body of a weak and feeble woman, but I have the heart and stomach of a king, and of a king of England too, and think foul scorn that Palmer of Spain or any prince of Europe dare to invade the borders of my realm. The Armada portrait by George Gower, commemorating victory, makes a powerful statement. Elizabeth is shown with her hand resting on the globe, while in the background the Spanish fleet is scattered. The defeat of the Spanish Armada was a huge boost to national pride. When James VI of Scotland succeeded to the throne of England in 1603 as James I, the union of the crowns marked the beginning of a single British navy. But with peace concluded with Spain and treasury finances strained, economies were called for. Crews were stood down and the navy downsized. Charles I's attempt to impose a tax to fund the navy created a backlash and we'll take a look at that next time. If you've enjoyed this video hit the like and subscribe buttons and click on the notification bell to be informed when the next video is available or you can subscribe by clicking on the rose window over my shoulder.